My name is Blossom. Welcome to the show. Today, I would like to welcome my guest, Miss LaDonna Harris, who's going to tell us her testimony. I'm not the one to gossip, so I'm going to let her tell it. Go get you some coffee, call somebody, and come on back. Welcome back to the show. When I tell you we got a story for you today, but like I say, I'm not the one to gossip. This young lady's going to tell you her testimony, how God delivered her from alcoholism. Like I said, we want to welcome Miss LaDonna Harris. LaDonna, thank you, girl, for being here today. Thank you for having me, Miss Blossom. Then you're welcome. I, like I was telling everybody, alcoholism is... Uh, it doesn't have a certain color to it. it. It doesn't matter what color, height, age, size. It's a disease. And so today I want you to tell them how God delivered you and what are you doing now since you've been clean and sober. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Blossom. Um, I would like to think that I grew up in somewhat of a normal uh, household, had my biological mom, dad, brothers. Um, my dad was an alcoholic, and I grew up seeing a lot of... Uh, from him abusing alcoholism. Um, as I grew up, uh, teenage years, he decided to get clean and sober, so he had to go through treatment to get his alcoholism under control. Now, I don't mean, I mean, I don't mean to cut <clears throat> you off, but do you believe that alcoholism is a generational curse? I do. I, um, in the beginning, I didn't know, but um, me battling alcoholism myself, I found out that it was actually hereditary. Um, this triggers for me was single parenting mm -hmm. and uh, just low self-esteem from the beginning. Um, as a little girl, I didn't think I was good enough, didn't think I was pretty enough. Um, as I became an adult, I started drinking casually on um, parties or, or celebrations until I started having kids and the stresses of being a single mother triggered some things and so that was my way of coping was through drinking alcohol. And the harder life got, the more I drank and to the point where I drank to need it. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to drink and to survive or to get up and try to function from day to day. And it went from drinking um, at home to drinking on the job. I really think sometimes it's the people, places, and the things. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we want to fit in so till we'll do anything to be with this certain crowd. Do you think that's what you went through? Uh, no, mine was strictly choice. I can't say anyone influenced me or right. someone talked me into it. It was just something I felt like I needed to get through. It made me forget about my problems at the time. Right. Didn't know the more I was drinking, the worse it was going to get because when I woke up from the hangovers, I the problem was there right. with more problems because a lot of times I would uh, go into my checking account and you know to try to you know supply my, my, my habit and would overdraw my account was blaming everybody uh, it was never my fault and so it became out of control right. one day I woke up and I was lost had always been raised to be strong will strong mind but this had a hold on me and I could not get myself out of it I, I kept trying I tried to be a social drinker that people talked about. I tried to cut back, but when I cut back, I, when I started back drinking, I, it was worse. Well, you know, I, I went through the same thing myself, you know, being delivered from alcohol and drugs, and it was a generational curse, you know, on my father's side and my great-grandmother. But one thing I do know, it's always a route to why we are getting high or drunk. Mm -hmm. Mine was being molested. I just couldn't say the word mm -hmm. without getting high or drunk. But what route do you think that played with your alcoholism? Um, wanted to have fun and enjoy, but didn't know it was another way to enjoy. Um, drinking allowed me to be free, mm -hmm. to do things I wouldn't have normally done in a sober mind. When I drank, I was able to just hang out and do some things that I regret doing, but nevertheless, the alcoholism allowed what, me to do the things. Well, were you like me when I got drunk? I got up on the dance floor and nobody couldn't tell me nothing. I mean, you, I mean, we just thought we was cute, didn't yes, we? Yes, yes was just a sight, you yes, know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. But with the alcoholism, okay, like you said with the, you wanted to fit in, do you think that started about with your childhood or? or yeah. You know how you have some mm -hmm. kids, they want to wear the name brand mm -hmm, clothes mm -hmm, and stuff? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
I think that's a big part in the, mm -hmm. with the alcoholism right, and right. with right, drug right, abuse, right, period. Right, right, right. But we just have to realize that um, we can be delivered, but right. we, we must, we got to want it for ourselves, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, right now, if you had to look into the camera and minister to somebody, what would you tell them right now? Look into that camera right there and tell them. Um, I would tell them that it's about choices. It's about choices that we make and the choices that we make early on. All choices, good or bad, uh, they have consequences. The choice that I made to become an alcoholic or to be an alcoholic, they had dire consequences. But through the help of the Lord, nobody but God, the grace of God that he delivered me because I, I couldn't have done it on my own. Okay. Um, now, when you were drinking, you, you didn't drink while you were pregnant. No, no. Okay, that, that's good. No, because you have no. a lot of people that say I, <clears throat> I, I was drinking and the babies come out shaking mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and um, and I'm not knocking nobody because a drug is a drug and alcohol is alcohol, mm -hmm. you know. But I thank God that you wasn't right, one of the right. ones. But what was your breaking point? You know, everybody has a breaking point. So what was your breaking point mm -hmm. that you want to do something about it? Right. Or did you go into treatments or several treatments or was it church? Mm -hmm. Was it a man? You know, we right, always right, pick right, right. something. So right. what was your breaking point? My breaking point was toward the end, I knew it was a problem. It was no more blaming. It was no more trying to figure out. I knew it was a problem and I knew I needed help. And my little boy uh, had a uh, baby 14 years after my uh, oldest son. What and did you think about 14 years? <laughs> Gastro bypass. Oh, but okay. um, but um, but he was a blessing in a lot of ways. Um, um, you know, becoming a mother again after so long, uh, the world had changed, people had changed. Um, it was tough, and like I said, the alcoholism uh, allowed. I felt like it allowed me to cope and to deal with uh, the stresses of single parenting with a child with special needs like my little boy. And uh, what really, really got me to the point where I knew I was about to fall apart was um, I. I looked in the mirror and I could no longer identify who LaDonna was. Right. Um, I knew it, it, was, it, it was a problem. And something happened on the job where um, my managers found out. Now, did you ever go to your mom or your, your dad and just try to sit down and, and talk to them or ask them for some kind of help? You know, we always want to reach out to a church person mm -hmm, or mm -hmm, family mm -hmm. member. Who did you reach out to? Well, I reached out to, to more friends because I did not want my family to know I had lost control because I was not raised like that. Um, I wanted them to know that I was a strong LaDonna that I had started out being in life. Um, I didn't want them to know. I tried to stay away from them. I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want to hear what they had to say because I was so lost. At that time, I didn't want to hear anything. I would talk to people like you um, who had uh, issues with abuse. Uh, drug abuse or whatever, and um, I would talk to try to get some sense to knock me into reality, to, to do, so I, I was trying to get help. I think the way my lifestyle was reaching out and crying out, I just didn't go to them and say, look y'all, I need some help. Right. So I, I knew that, that, that it was something that was wrong. Well, with that being said, um, we're going to go for a commercial break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to let everybody know what God has done in your life since you've been clean and sober. Okay? Thank you for being here. Thank you. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. the sower, Michael Guido of Meta, Georgia, with a seed for the garden of your heart. A Swiss mountaineer enjoyed walking with his dog. Every day he noticed the birds clinging to the soft hairs of his dog, and he desired to imitate them. 
Day after day he studied the tiny burrs, and after much effort he invented Velcro. Our Lord, in his wisdom, made a variety of things. The earth is full of his gifts. He's anxious to share them with us. If we need his wisdom and want to know what he's anxious to share with us, all we have to do is ask him. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. A seed from the sower has originated from the studios of the Guido Evangelistic Association, Meta, Georgia. Welcome to Creation Minute, I'm Eric Hoven. Was there really a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago? Skeptics claim it's all a myth. However, there's overwhelming evidence that indicates the flood really occurred. More than 270 cultures around our world have a legend of the flood. Geologists find massive erosion features all over the world. Coal seams span the entire globe, some of them hundreds of feet thick. On top of Mount Everest, they even find clams. Now when a clam dies, it relaxes and opens up. These are found in the closed position, 450 miles from the beach and five and a half miles above sea level. So was there really a worldwide flood? The evidence says yes. Why don't you let us know what you think at creationminute.com. Welcome back. Once again, my name is Blossom. God bless it. I have my guest speaker here today, Ms. LaDonna Harris, who's sharing her testimony of alcoholism. LaDonna, I, like I said, I want to just thank you for coming because it's not easy coming and, and being open um, and telling your story, you know, because we're so used to people putting us down. Mm -hmm. But I, I thank God for you just being who you are, you know. Um, now, like I was saying before the commercial break was, you, you went through your alcoholism, um, then you, you found your breaking point. But once you went through that breaking point, <clears throat> did you go willingly or did you go kick in? Because, you know, we are kick, <laughs> you know. How, how did you go? It was a shock and awe. I, it, it was a reality check because once I was found out. <laughs> uh, it Why was, we try to hide? Because you don't want, you want people to think you have it together. You remember back in the days that show, uh, what was her name? Wonder Woman. She had that invisible plane. Mm -hmm. We could see the plane, but she couldn't. That's how it is with our mm -hmm, addiction. Mm -hmm, Everybody mm -hmm. can see yes. but us. Because yes. when we look in that mirror, we oh, we think we're the finest mm -hmm, thing there is. Mm -hmm. I know when I looked in the mirror, I was looking like tails from the crib and it smelled like hot buttermilk. But I was so pretty. You know, it's something about them drugs and them alcohol. Yes, it's yes. deceiving. It is very deceiving. Because I will tell you, once I became clean and sober, I had to go through treatment, a six-week uh, program, which my job, thank God, allowed me to get myself some help. But what was meant for evil, God got the glory he out of it. He got the glory. Because if I'm remembering back, they thought they was digging a ditch for you. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that they was helping you. It was, oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of the trials and tribulations that we go through, we don't know at that time we're going through that is actually going to be, I always say the stumbling block end up being a stepping stone. Right, right. Um, although it was hard, and I thank God that he placed you in my life um, to, to, to help me and not see everything everybody else was seeing. You saw the real person. I just had to get there. And once I became, uh, went through treatment um, and found out and was educated about what was going on, that right. it was in fact a hereditary. And that's the thing right there. We have to be educated. Mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. things get understanding. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? right. It's just right. like cooking a cake. If mm -hmm. you can look at the box, mm -hmm. you see that cake, but if you don't read the ingredients, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna come out with no right, cake. You're right. gonna come out with just a picture right, right. of a cake. Well, if everybody's like me, my thinking with uh, alcohol or any type of abuse is that it's a choice. That is a choice. You you made the choice, the decision to to pick up the bottle or to pick up the pipe or whatever it is. But I, in the beginning, at some point, I think it is your choice. But after so long, I believe it gets out of control. And I think mine, it, it, it got out of control. And at that time, I was dependent on it and I needed it. I felt like I needed it. My body craved it. It is, it's a, a disease, but we can have uh, deliverance, right? But you gotta want it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, you have I don't to. care 
who you try to do it for, but mm -hmm. if you don't want it for LaDonna mm -hmm. or Blossom, mm -hmm. we're not going to stay clean and sober. So now, girl, tell me about what after you went through treatment, what, what happened? Because I remember when right, you went through right, treatment, right. you was not happy about that. Right. I think I think you was pretty upset about right, that. Right. I think you might have cut them people too right. if you could have, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to be real about right, this, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. It's just like, you know, we, did, we didn't, we, I know when I was out there, mm -hmm. I enjoyed getting high. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like the consequences right, that came right, behind right, it, right, you know, right. so mm -hmm. back to the point where you had to go through treatment. Right, right. Well, that allowed me to um, get away from everybody and everything because I was ashamed that I was found out. And I, I, I went into my own little place of dealing with it and to coping without the drinking. Um, I tell people about a month into my sobriety, the world looked different. I, I just couldn't believe how distorted my mind was from drinking, how I, I was more, I was aggressive. I thought everybody was at me. I thought everybody was out to get me. And, and I realized that, you know, what was going on with me? I realized that I loved myself. I had to look at my skin. I was like, oh my goodness, you're okay, LaDonna. Out, out of all these years, you was trying to run from who you were. I like myself. I love myself. Right. And at that time, I decided to get back into school because I had always been raised education. My mother always drove education, especially being a woman. If anything were to happen, you can take care of your kids. Right. So I uh, enrolled back into school. Right. And thank God, by the grace of God, I received my degree in criminal justice from the University of Alabama. Um, they did a big two-page article um, in the paper about my battle. Um, I, my dad had even passed away on Father's Day. So I went through so much uh, with that, but I think uh, back on that, it was meant to be, it, ne it needed to happen for me to get to where I am now. Right, right. Uh, and you know what, I thank God I was able to meet your dad before he went to glory, you know. Um, and it, alcoholism or addiction don't have a look to it. Right. You know, when right, I met right. your father, <clears throat> you know, he was sitting there mm -hmm. strong looking mm -hmm. and, you mm -hmm. know, he was able to talk back mm -hmm. to me and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God because, you know, you. When it comes to little things like that, you have to take it and, and run with right, it. Right, you know? right, right. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you know, I, I thank God for allowing me to come into your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of people saying, I, girl, I seen how you was, how mm -hmm. God changed you. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I actually can say, <laughs> I seen God change you. Right. I remember many days you coming to work, wigs flipped around this way and eyelashes up that way. And I would say, baby, you're going to be all right. right. You're like, yeah. I, I said, baby, you're going to be all right. Because I know, mm -hmm. you know, with me, you mm -hmm. know, when I go back home, you know, and people be like, B. I right. said, well, nobody mm -hmm. but God. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. We can't do this on our own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And anybody you find that said that they can, that's a self-made person right, and they don't right, last right, long. Right, 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 right. Um, because when we think that we can do everything on our own and we mm -hmm. can't do it without mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to last right, long. Right, right, it, right. It's right. not. So now, so, okay, so now let's go back to the, the children. How are your children now? They are great. Um, like I said, the, 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 a lot of the problems and the issues that led up to the alcoholism with the excessive drinking uh, was the little, my baby that was born and had some health issues. And, and Jamar, some serious. Yes, yes, ma'am. He, and he is to this day. God bless but you. But he was a blessing. I, I didn't realize, how, you know, because at the time I was going through so much, I was saying, why me? What did I do? People want to wonder if they did something or something. But you know, no, no, no. A lot of times God will allow us, and I'm, I, I found this out with my walk uh, that I'm walking now with God, that he will allow us to get to some uncomfortable places and leave us there for a while until we get that lesson. And um, like I said, my baby, um, he has been such an inspiration as well as And my when oldest. I say Chamari is something, that's a smart little boy. Yes, he is. But what I want you to do right now, I want you to look into the camera and, and minister to a young woman that's going through the same thing that you're going through and let her know that if God delivered you from alcoholism mm -hmm. to raise a child because for me, when I was in my addiction, I gave my children to my mother and my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. So I admire you mm -hmm. for stepping to the to the stone and, and taking care of your kids. Right. You know, I I don't have no problem getting nobody their props. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing that you yes. raise your children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I want you to look into the camera and I want you to minister to, to a young lady because she's sitting there right now talking about I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But let her know that if God did it for you, right. He can do it for her. Minister to her that camera. Single parenting is, is tough. It's one of the toughest challenges that I've probably ever faced um, with a special needs child. But um, there's a way out. And my relationship with God, I know it was no one but Him that allowed me to experience that, first of all, and to go through it and to be able to tell people like you guys that are watching that there is help, there is hope. But foremost, my relationship with God yeah. And you know what? There's no book on how to raise a kid because if 
Adam and Eve children was jacked up, I was going to be jacked up. You know, we mm-hmm. jacked up, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, right. But it's because we want to do right. And, and I tell everybody, I'm not perfect. I'll still snap, crackle, and pop. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's by the grace of God right. that I don't take this shoe off and hit you in the head. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> you just have to be real about exactly, this thing. You know what I'm exactly, saying? Exactly, exactly. Either we go on barbecue or meal, dude. Right. One of the two. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. So now, once we talked about the kids, your relationship with your children, when you went back to school, and I call it edification, yes. you know, that's past education. Yes, ma'am. That's edification. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now once you went back and got your edification, mm-hmm. so what are you doing now? I am now, I am um, involved in my church. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spend a lot of time with my family. I know I can't go back and change what uh, the past was like or what I didn't do as a mother because I know I did the very best that I could even with the drinking. I did the best that I could. So now what I do with my kids, is, it was, especially with my baby, I, I have him very involved in church. He's in the choir. Um, That's what I'm saying. Tamar, he can sing. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody (laughs) say. That boy can sing. Yes, ma'am. And he'll talk to you with the old man spirit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you, God's just blessed you and that little boy. Yes, he has. And your old son, Jamar. Now, you know, that's my baby. Dodrick, that's my my baby. He's such a help in my life also because during the time he was Chamari's age, that's when I was doing the things that I was doing. So we lost connection. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he and I ended up connecting and and, and coming back together as mother and son. And now we get along well, uh, wonderful. Um, He helps me out with his little brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, We just have a good relationship. Um, They know that their mom, well, Dodrick was old enough to remember some of the things that um, that his that he saw right. me do. But I told him because we were having some issues there because he was still remembering the old mom. Right. And I told him, you're going to have to let this go. We're going to have to put this behind us. We got to move on because we can't keep looking back there. There's nothing back there that, you know, although we can't forget it, right. we can forgive the situation and just, you know, move on. And, that, and that's so true. Um, <laughs> I have three sons, and uh, when God blessed me to get a year clean, I was a- I call them my soldiers. Mm-hmm. So when God blessed me to get clean, I was able to call each one of my soldiers, and I apologize for everything I had said and done, because mm-hmm. that wasn't none of me. Right. That was the crack cocaine right, right. and the alcohol. Mm-hmm. But you know, them boys did not want to hear nothing about their old gal out right. there on the streets mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that. So by the grace of God, I have a relationship with my sons now. So when I go home to visit, I have 12 grandbabies. So I play grandmama and I get them right on back, right. but I still have that connection with my boys. Right. And it's because of God. Mm-hmm. Because the boys, they've heard so much right. and they've seen so much. Mm-hmm. So God has used me. I'm a motivational speaker. So I let women know we cannot just think that these kids are just going to come back. Because right. we was like a, a jack in the box. Right. Here's mommy. Mm-hmm. Mommy's mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. So they're so used to sent right. us in right. and out. So we have to earn that trust exactly. back. Exactly. That's like with right. family members, right. Right. anything, right. because right. we've destroyed a lot. Right. 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 So now, okay. Now with your mom, what kind of relationship you and your mom? Lovely woman, yes. lovely yes. dog. Yes. Hey, mama. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and I have always been close. My mom is from the old school. She raised me sternly. Um, she raised me and taught me that it's certain things that women and girls can do and certain things the boys can do. Girls, it just doesn't look right. But I was, being LaDonna, I was going to book the system. I'm going to show you what I can do, and right. I'm going to do it. And But she was trying to deter me from the the, the harshness of life. And, uh, and she did a very good job. Love my mama to death. But I had to do it my way right. until I got myself into uh, some trouble. And even though now she and I have a difference of opinions, but I know at the end of the day she right. It's just I got to do it my way sometimes. But from the, for the most part, if she say, LaDonna, don't go left. Lay, right. lay, don't go left. Okay, I ain't going. Because last time she told me, I went and look at me. Now. You know, so I, 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 I listen to my mom. My mom and I are very, very close, and I thank God for her. Well, you know what? Unless we go through it. Like I tell a lot of people with these shoes, I know everybody wondering about my shoes, my shirt, my pocketbook. These are the items I used to wear when I was homeless. Mm -hmm. So I let a lot of people know if you cannot wear my shoes mentally or physically, there's nothing you can tell me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you used to come to me and say, Miss Blossom, Blase Squase, I, God allowed me to be able to minister to you because right. I had been through it. Right. I maybe didn't wear a wig flipped around, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I didn't even have no hair, you know what I'm saying? But I knew going down that road, right. I said, LaDonna, right, don't right, run right, down to that right, wall right, like crash right, dummy, you right. know? Mm-hmm. But unless the person goes through it. Right. So when you get ready to minister to somebody, how are you going to be able to tell somebody something? Exactly, you- exactly. Well, now what I do, because I, I, I love uh, dealing with young folk, because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some of the people in the generation um, under me, a lot of them, um, I'm not going to say they're lost, a lot of them are just um, 
it's their the generation, That's you it. know, a time it of changes, time. Yeah. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I like to try to tell them and let them know this is what I did, you know, yeah. but look at me now. There is hope, you know, there is, there's hope. Um, a lot of time it's the environment or the people that we choose to be around. Right. What I've done now, a lot of my friends of the past, love them to death, still do, but I'm in right. a totally different place now. You've got to change and, the people. And place you have things. to love to be with yourself and by yourself a lot of times. Because a lot of times now, I think back, a lot of times on Friday nights, I'll sit at home and it's like, you know, I had a million friends, you know, and not saying that they're not friends. It's just, I just don't do the things that, you know, that I used to do. So therefore, I'm mostly, mostly with my, my family. Uh, with me, okay, when you talk about friends, like when I ended up in jail and prison, where them friends was, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, right, and right. And then when it came time to the commissary, no, you don't know who your friends are. God right. will show you who right, they are. Right, right, but right. But like I said, I just want to thank you for coming and just being open and mm -hmm. telling your testimony thank and just, you. just sharing your story. Yes. And you're going to be able to help so many people. It's not just you sitting here on the couch. It's that you opening it up and mm -hmm. just letting people know mm -hmm. if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't right, be here. Right, right, right. But like I said, I just want to tell you thank you. And we'll be right back. We're going to go for a commercial right now. All right. Hey, new guy. Shovel, right? Yeah, Rake, and I'm not exactly new. I've seen some action. Ha. Your shovel, come on. Oh, real nice coming from a rake. Ooh, get these heavy leaves off me. <laughs> hey, man, my last gig, I almost got electrocuted, nearly drowned, and went head to head with a metal pipe. <gasps> huh? uh -uh. That guy never called 811 to see if it was safe to dig. It doesn't take the sharpest tool in the shed to call 811. Our guy calls every time he digs. The mailbox, landscaping, the deck. Oh, man, that was a big job. Oh, remember that? Oh, that was a big one. Yeah, I remember that. Calls every time? Cool. Calling 811 is so easy, any tool could do it. It's quick and easy. Calling 811 gets your underground utility lines marked for free. It makes every project safer for everyone. Calling 811 before digging prevents utility outages, legal hassles, and personal injury. Hey, safe digging is no accident. Always call 811 before you dig. Welcome to Creation Minute. I'm Eric Hoven. Was there really a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago? Skeptics claim it's all a myth. However, there's overwhelming evidence that indicates the flood really occurred. More than 270 cultures around our world have a legend of the flood. Geologists find massive erosion features all over the world. Coal seams span the entire globe, some of them hundreds of feet thick. On top of Mount Everest, they even find clams. Now when a clam dies, it relaxes and opens up. These are found in the closed position, 450 miles from the beach and five and a half miles above sea level. So was there really a worldwide flood? The evidence says yes. Why don't you let us know what you think at creationminute.com. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. Protected the weak and defeated the strong. Shown courage and compassion. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. Some of the things he does, I just don't understand. There are things he likes, I just don't know what they are. Sometimes it feels hopeless. But when you're a parent, you just don't let go. You do everything you can. Parenting can be a scary place, but the Boys Town National Hotline can help. When you need answers, help, or hope, call the Boys Town National Hotline at 1-800-448-3000. Powerful name of all. Once again, my name is Blossom, and I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to thank my special guest, Miss LaDonna Harris, for coming and just opening it up and letting her know and letting you know 
that God can and he will. With that being said, Jeremiah 29 11, it states that, and I'm paraphrasing, it said that he, he has a plan for us, an expected end. It, it's not going to, it might hurt, but it's working for our good. With that being said, just continue to know that God loves you. I love you.